So now we know two, uh, two approximation techniques, midpoint and trapezoidal rule. In the first example, uh, we're going to do the following. Uh, what's given to us is the definite integral from 1 to 2 of 1 over x dx. Yeah. Here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to approximate uh, by the midpoint rule. Tell you what, uh, to write it in short, instead of saying the midpoint rule, I'm, I'm going to write m sub 5. And we understand by that that we want the midpoint rule with 5 sub intervals. Okay. As notice that before we wrote m sub, m sub n, m sub n, so we give n a specific value for the midpoint. Likewise, the next part we're going to approximate using the trapezoidal rule. So, actually, let me rewrite it. I have an unnecessary V in there. So, approximate by first, let's do the midpoint with five interval. Second, let's do the trapezoidal with five intervals and lastly we're gonna calculate exactly okay. and D uh, calculate the errors Or, or the estimation error, the, the error in approximation. And we have d notation for those errors. Uh, we're going to call them E for error, E sub M for the midpoint, and E sub T for the error in the trapezoid, in the trapezoidal method. And after that, uh, Hopefully, I'll have time to also to discuss uh, how to estimate the errors in general. All right, so let's start with the first technique. Uh, since n equals 5, then uh, we know that delta x, this is common to the first, to the midpoint and the trapezoidal rules, uh, will be 2 minus 1 over 5 and therefore it will be 1 over 5 or 0 0.2. Now, for the first technique, remember the midpoint, we need to calculate the midpoint, but also it's good to, to calculate um, x sub 0, x sub 1, and all the way to x sub 5. So we start with 1, and then because delta x is 1.2, x sub 1 is 1.2, x sub 2 is 1.4, uh, x sub 3 is 1.6, x sub 4 is 1.8, and x sub 5 is 2. Okay? So what is the midpoint? x bar sub 1. It will be the center between 1 and 1 1.2, so it will be 1.1. 1 .1. The rest is the difference of delta x. So x sub 2 will be 1.3, except 3 will be 1.5 and so on. So we have those values and now we are ready to calculate m sub 5. Delta x is 0 0.2 and we have f of, of all of those. Okay, So f of 1.1 .1 f of 1.3, f of 1.5, and so on. So 
Specifically, the function is 1 over, so it will be 1 over 1.1, 1, .1, 1 over 1.3, and so on. Plug it in your calculator and come up with the following value. This turned out to be 0 0.691908. Okay, apparently somewhere in the instructions you are told to calculate to the uh, six decimal places. Place. Okay, what about T sub 5, the trapezoidal? Okay, um, now we're going to use... Uh, x sub 0 all the way to x sub 5, but we're going to go like this, delta x over 2, right, so we have 0 0.2 over 2 times, uh, we're going to start with f of 1, we're going to start with f of x sub 0, right, and then we go 2 times f of 2, f of uh, 1.2, 2 times f of 1.4, 2 times f of 1.6, 2 times f of 1.8, and then we come to the last one, which is not multiplied by 2, like so. Okay? So this is pretty much uh, how you do it. 0 0.2 divided by 2 is 0 0.1. And now 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1, I'm sorry, 2 over 1, because we multiply by 2. 2 over 1.2, 2 over 1.4, 2 over 1.6, 2 over 1.8, 2 1 and 1 over 2. So the first and the last. And then you calculate it, and the value is... 0 0.695 uh, 635 the exact calculation that's the easy of them in this case the integral of uh, 1 over x dx from 1 to 2 is the natural log of x evaluated from 1 to 2 so it will be the natural log of 2 minus natural log of 1 of course natural log of 1 is 0 so it's a natural log of 2 and plug in this value 0 0.693 or 147 Part D, I'll do it on the next page, okay? So I can start here, D. We define the error of an approximation as E, the error, will be the exact value minus the approximated value. Now, one can argue that we are better off uh, to use the absolute value, but matter of fact, there is reason why uh, we want to use exact minus approximated because this can tell us whether the approximation is overestimate or underestimate. Okay? If the result 
of the if the error is positive then the approximation is underestimate if the error is negative then the approximating uh, approximation is overestimate and that's the reason why we don't use absolute value in this case for the error okay we'll we'll use it later on so um what is it in our case so let's look um, at E sub M, the approximation of the exact of the uh, midpoint. Well, the exact value is 0 0.693147. The approximated value using the uh, midpoint technique, or approximation 0 0.691908, um, <clears throat> The difference is 0 0.001239, and it's positive, so the midpoint is underestimate. Okay, so what about uh, E sub t? Again, we'll take the exact value correct to six decimal places. The exact value is the natural log of two. 0 0.693147 is not exact. It's the it's it's round it's rounded to six decimal places, and the result of the um, Trapezoidal uh, method 0 0.695635, and the value, the difference is negative 0 0.02488. So, which one is more accurate? Which error is smaller? Sorry? Yeah. Which technique is better in this case? The first one, the midpoint. And that way you'll see that this is uh this is true in general. Let me use the English language properly. Okay, M sub M sub five is an under estimate. Obviously no English major among us in the calc two. All right, so let's uh, let me now list uh several observations. after doing these two techniques, let's make the following observation. Some of them, uh, it takes some some uh, practice to uh, recognize this observation, so um, this is based on somebody else that uh, performed this on a number of occasions. Anyway, here's the thing. Uh, the general observation is that something that we know all or already, if we want to increase the accuracy, we need to do what? I'm sorry? Go ahead, Josh. And we do it by increasing the number of sub interval. Okay, that, that's kind of uh, intuitive. Um, now, the other thing that we saw already, well, we didn't see, but from the very beginning when we saw the difference between left and sum and right and sum, 
okay, uh, we realize that um, one will be underestimated, the other will be overestimated. So the error, the the errors will be opposite in sign. So errors in left hand L sub n and R sub n are opposite in sign and appear to decrease this is the stuff that we didn't practice ourselves but as you do the homework you can observe that they appear to decrease by about a factor of two um, when we double the number of subintervals in. So this is something that you can try, especially if you write something into Excel, uh, as we don't want to tediously calculate time after time after time. But if you write uh, something, a program, or write an approximation into Excel, which that's what normal people do, uh, then uh, you can observe this. Let's talk about the difference between the midpoint and the trapezoid. So M sub n and T sub n are more accurate than the, the left hand sum and the right hand sum. Okay, what about the errors? Similar to this observation number two, we have observation number four, the errors in uh, M sub N and T sub N are opposite in sign as well. And appear to decrease by about a factor of four. When we double so and this is this is a major thing. It tells you that it tells you how effective M sub N and T sub N, those two technique compared to left and sum and right and sum. Uh, as you double the number of subintervals, it you increase the accuracy by about a factor of four compared to a factor of two. Okay, and last observation is has to do with the size of the error. The size of uh, the error in the midpoint, so it will be e sub m, is about one half. of the size of uh, the error in the trapezoidal te technique, so the size of E sub T. The next thing we're going to do, we, we really want to know what is the largest error if we employ either technique. In other words, we, we approximate and let's say we decide the number of subintervals that we can live with, but we want to know for this number of subintervals what will be the biggest error possible so we know how accurate we are and can we control the error if for instance we want to calculate within one millionth the accuracy of one millionth, one millionth compared to the exact value how many subintervals we need to employ to obtain, to maintain this accuracy so the error bounds is something that is very important when we do any kind of numerical approximation, and this will be the next topic.